Okay, so I hope this will kind of kick us off for a discussion tomorrow. But the, I mean, we didn't get a chance to talk much about the monadology, but the idea of part and whole and of detail and mass, let's say, works its way through all these projects at these different scales. You couldn't do it. You could have easily done all this stuff 300 years ago. Uh, the only problem is somebody would have to calculate it. It's the computers that suddenly make calculus available. I mean, structural engineers were using calculus over 100 years ago, but they would have to take an object and analyze it. It's really, in the last 10 years, the first time architects can use calculus as a medium in an intuitive way where you can anticipate what the machine's going to give you back and not just work analytically with calculus, but really work with it um, as a design system. And I don't think anyone's adequately theorized it yet. So there's no aesthetic discourse of calculus yet, although it's you know, going to be the next thing. Okay. Thanks. Different fears and your, your joy is to make it as uh, unexpected in their, in their twists uh, as possible, but build on a pretty uh, solid uh, mathematical model. The model is pretty simple, so to speak, you know, but what comes out is uh, very, as you see, it's variation, and what you can do, it's also unexpectedly rich in, in there. Something which uh, reminds me of this um, chaos theory excitement we had 20 years ago when it uh, came out and we saw this both things. You know, that it's not this uh, opposition actually, but on different stages of the same thing. And also this very nice thing to say, there is no real repetition, the most boring thing in the world is there, so you have to look closer and then you see how much this is a variation. So this would be kind of my first question. Is there a connection between this chaos theory, between Feigenbaum and you, for example? Well, absolutely. I mean, the, the model of chaos theory and actually the earlier model of form finding, which was more Fry Otto and Antonio Gaudi to a degree, uh, what it does is it produces a kind of wealth of variations. You know, it produces a kind of breeding strategy where you can input information and get endless numbers of variations produced, which then you select from. The difference, which I actually think is an innovation, is that by theorizing calculus is, a, is both an aesthetic and a structural geometric system. What you can do is work intuitively with it. And you know, I would never use that word around architecture students, because when you say intuition to an architecture student, it means willful ignorance you know, and self-expression. But when you say the word intuition to you know, a philosopher, what it connotes is systematicity, like a different form of systematicity. So the chaos theory doesn't provide uh, a sensibility to me, you know, in the Deleuzean sense of a sensibility or the Bergsonian sense of a sensibility. What chaos theory provides is a robust system of variation, but too close to variety for me. And it, what it leaves out is, because it leaves out the aesthetic, I mean, it doesn't leave it out, it just says everything's beautiful. Like if you talk to somebody that uses chaos theory, they say, well, it's all nature, so it's all beautiful. And you say, which one is more beautiful? And they say, well, it's all equally beautiful. And that's a sign that they're not theorizing the aesthetic. And so that, for architecture, is problematic to me. I, I can see this, but you see Mitch Feigenbaum, he spent several years of his life in the best computer of Rockefeller University, to, uh, to teach a computer to draw a line that looks beautifully. Yeah. That is, you know, this map of the world, you know, to make sure that it has this little <laughs> variation in there, yeah. which makes us look beautifully. Also, they are aware of this. 
that the Bible, but you're totally right. What you do now is you kind of focus on that. Yeah. The Bible, this kind of beauty by not being uh, clear cut is is that uh, what what attracts you. And, and what chaos, well, what chaos theory and what fractal geometry brought to the table is this infinitesimal. I mean, specifically that coastline drawing. You know, you can go into it endlessly and it gets finer, and you can pull out of it endlessly and it gets simpler. And that, to an architect, is one of the most radical things you could ever show them. Because most architects think about, you know, how do you detail a simple box so that you fetishize the detail and it's discreet. Whereas that kind of a model is continuous. No, it is just Leibniz that uh, carry out the finite in an infinite way. And that is why we all here actually is a fold is one of our key texts in this program. Mm -hmm. So I tell everybody, if you never read a philosophical book in your life, this is a book, 120 pages, you have to read. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, especially because of this, and, and the monad as an understanding of humanity mm -hmm. is also extremely important there, is to see that even if all monads are working together, they are not working together as similar. They are yeah. very their own singular uh, entities, but that's what usually would say cannot allow that they are working together. So you needed like like it's a preset, uh, pre-stabilized uh, harmony. Yeah. But in fact, it is actually the other way around. Nicht? That the, the incentive of working together comes from this uh, non-similarity or non-difference. Similarity there might be, but you know, this copying uh, stuff. Yeah, as in so far, this is uh, very, very close to, to understanding. And the good thing, what I learned, so to speak, is to see for the first time some of my ideas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, so far, they are always abstract. Right? And I try to find them in, 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 in the way we live our lives and in, 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 in events. And suddenly, they are jumping at me from, from there. And so that is really a great man, thanks to... <laughs> Your, what you call tool, that's one of the things that the students, you know, this is a person which is outlawed in this program yeah, yeah, yeah. by me, you know, but I know there are certain sort of professions, <laughs> the guy has not a tool and he's not the master of it, so he lives within this, you know, so it's a way of life, it's a life technique as I call it, but I, I understand the, the naming in this in we will, uh, we will allow you to do that even if you translate it right away into not tools. Okay. Um, yes, I think in this uh, respect, it's a very, it's uh, something uh, unique. <coughs> when we ask ourselves, why do we need him in the program? Eh? We need him because he can, he can. Show you where it works. He can show you where it works. He can show you where it works. You know? And uh, this is extremely helpful because the problem is that abstraction always tends to feed other abstractions. And at the end, we have no idea what we are talking about, we just have concepts. And with you, we have a chance to visualize this uh, concept and see also when it doesn't work. That is the main thing. All right, but uh, let's open the, more general, the second question now in the program. Yes? On a roll here. All right. um, I wanted to know what you guys consider about psychologically when you build these structures that are uh, new and do not repeat over and over again. Uh, about how people find their way back to where they live and uh, how they find their way to other places in there. Um, it's hard enough for people to find it in a normal, like, stack building. Um, no, but, in, I mean, imagine you live in, you know, 400 meters on the seventh floor of a kilometer-long building where everything's the same. It's much harder to find your place than if you live in a building where everything's a little bit different. I mean, part of what, what I wanted to do was respect the modernist seriality. You know, say, well, there can be extreme repetition. So I didn't want to say, well, one end of the building is going to be, you know, one thing and another is going to be the other. I wanted to say it's all the same, but the same in the sense that they're not identical. 